If I turn this on and off, you can see those reds now look a lot more deep, rich, like it would be with film. Welcome back filmmakers. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to get the Super 8 look. I have my footage set up here. What I'm going to do is first, this is the most important step, go to your timeline, go all the way down to output blanking, then choose 1.33. Now this gives you this box effect that Super 8 is usually shot on. It's usually four by three for Super 8. Once you have this, you're going to have to import another piece of media, which is grain. So while you're in your media storage tab, you wanna locate where your grain is. Now you can get these completely for free offline if you just look. You wanna make sure there's no license for it. Select all of your footage, then go and right click, then scroll down to add to media pool as matte. Now, when you add it as a matte, you're gonna go to your color tab. Now you have this set up to where you have the black bars, you have your grain ready so that you can put it on. And first, what you're gonna do, color grade it how you would normally color grade. I'm actually going to do the 709 node here. And then I'm also going to add a node by option S. I'm going to name this Cine. Drag in a color space transform to here too. And for the Cine, you're gonna do Rec 2020 to 709. And then for Fujifilm F-Log. And then for the output gamma, you're going to go down to Cine and Film Log. So now it's in a film log and you can do saturation compression. So it compresses the saturation and you can see now this is super flat, but it looks a lot more saturated. So then for the 709 node, you're gonna come here. For the color space, you're just gonna do input 709, output 709. And then for here, you're gonna do the output gamma 2.4. And for the input, you're gonna put Cineon film log. So now you have a Rec 709 image. And the reason we put the Cine here before is because we're going to actually put the grain right in between here. We're gonna do a few other things as well to make it look as film-like as possible. So here, if you're gonna add the grain, right click on the node, go down to add matte, then use 16 millimeter coarse or whatever film grain you have that you imported into your project. Then you're gonna press Alt L, drag the green onto here, and you can see now you can see your grain. And you wanna make sure that it's in the middle roughly about so that it's not messing up your exposure. Then for the composite mode, you're gonna right click here, scroll down to composite mode, then down to soft light. You can see now you have an overlay of grain onto your footage. You can also go here, you can use overlay here, but for me, overlay just seems too intense with this grain, so I just stick with soft light. Soft light is like the one I use most. And if I play this back, and after sinning, we're also going to blur. And here, instead of going to the regular blur tab, I actually want to use Gaussian blur. The reason why I use this is because it kind of gives it a different kind of blur. It just looks better for me. So I'm gonna up this just a little bit. I like it around 0.23. Sometimes I go 0.2. And let's watch this playback. Now it's kind of hard to see because everything is out of focus on mine. But if I go slow, if I go frame by frame, you can see this kind of looks like grain on Super 8. So now we have the overall film look set up and we can do a few other things for now. Now I'm going to add this, grab a still, and we're going to come back to this later because right now I want to focus on the colors. So now that we've set up the grain and everything, I can delete all that because I saved it here in the gallery. I'm going to come here and focus on the colors. So we can do exposure, saturation, let's add contrast in here. And don't forget PL for printer lights. Now we have all this here. We're going to come to timeline. I like to do this but I like to separate the grain from the actual color grade so that I can just focus on the color grade. And I'm gonna get rid of the blur and I'm gonna get rid of the grain here by just turning these two off. And if I turn those two off, you can just focus on the colors here. So now I go back to clip here. You can edit your exposure by coming to the HDR wheels, plug in your camera's color space. And now I can edit my exposure. I think I'm going to keep it just around here basic exposure. Now for the contrast, this really depends on your footage. If your footage is already really contrasty, you don't need to do this. I like to turn on editable splines, then drag down my shadows a little bit and drag up my highlights just to create a nice contrast curve. But I'm just gonna do this for now, but just know I might turn this off afterwards. Next, you go to your printer lights. Now, from my experience with Super 8, 
usually it's kind of got like a magenta cast. So the whole image is more magenta. So I'm gonna drag it magenta. The highlights usually have like this warm pinkish kind of tint. Then the shadows, you get like this bluish purple kind of tint. And now you might be saying, well, now the image just looks ridiculous. But what you can do is drag your gamma and make it more green. You can either make it more warm green or make it more cool green. Like this is before it's like really green and kind of like muddled, but now it kind of looks cool. And just play around with it until you get something you like. So now I have the highlights are more pink and really you don't really need to do this step if you don't want to, but I like to do it. If you're looking to saturate your footage cause it looks desaturated or you want to desaturate your footage, you can turn off channel one, turn off channel three, then go to HSV. And here what this does, now you're doing subtractive coloring or subtractive saturation. So now you can really up this and you can see how the colors get darker as you saturate it. Now that is way too much. Let's say the reds are kind of already oversaturated. You can just saturate the midtones like that. I will say this is looking a little desaturated other than the reds. So I'm going to saturate it just a little bit, bring it up. And now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna correct all this with a hue node. So anything I don't like, like these reds, these reds are kind of intense right now. I'm actually gonna affect the hue too. So I'm gonna go to the vector scope. You can see it's leaning more magenta. I'm just gonna bring this more red. And you can see now this is really looking like a film type red. And I'm gonna bring the greens more warm just to give it like a warmer cast, like it's a warm summer day. If I turn this on and off, you can see those reds now look a lot more deep, rich, like it would be with film. So now we can go back to timeline and you can turn on the blur and you can turn on the grain. And now you can see this grain and this blur are looking a lot more cohesive. And if I play it, it's looking pretty good so far. And you can see in the highlights, it's pink like we were wanting it to be. You can see I haven't added halation yet, and this is one of the most important parts of this look. What you're gonna do, I would turn off the grain for this. After the blur node, we will put a glow node. And you can see that kind of already is doing something. We wanna do glow alone. And you just wanna make really high light spots show up. Then for here, you kind of wanna do an orangish type look cause you usually get like a reddish orange glow. Then you can put this at point one. Here, I'll do screen. And honestly, here it's kind of hard to see. So you can do red or you can do orange. Somewhere in between you can do, but you can see this kind of gives it a little bit of a glow on those highlights. It's very subtle. It's almost not noticeable. And if you have like a nighttime scene, like I'll just give an example really fast right now if I can find one. So we got this here. If I go to timeline again, you can see this glow. It kind of gives like a highlight around these. If you had white lights, it would look even more intense because you actually get a tint around it. And here, this is actually a good example. But if I zoom in here, you can see if I turn that on and off, you get this kind of reddish glow near the highlights of the image. You can turn up the gamma like this and you can get this like really intense glow or you can make it more subtle. Now all this is completely free. You can see when I turn that on and I turn that off, you get that glowing highlight. Now if I add another one, let's name this flicker and we're gonna add a little flicker addition. If we bring this up into preview, we can see it flickers all over the place but it's kind of random. We want the range, bring that up for now, but the speed you wanna bring like all the way up. Bring the smoothness down, that way it's flickering a lot more. The randomness scale, bring that all the way up to get rid of pause. Now that we kind of have this all randomly set up, we're gonna drag the range. And now when we play this back, you can see it has like this little flicker, this little jitter that looks pretty much like film. Now it's not perfect. I would maybe put it at 0.33 and that's looking pretty much like film. Now the last thing we're gonna do is add shake. It has like a camera jitter. What I've found is if you put it on rectified sign invert, that always help the motion scale. We're gonna bring that down, but for right now, we're going to bring it up speed. 
turn it all the way up, motion blur all the way down. For this, I'm going to do 0 0.009, then for this, 0 0.006. Scratch that, 0 0.006, then 0 0.009 here. Because you want the tilt to be a little more than the pan. Then you don't want any rotation. And here, I'll turn that up so you can really see what's going on here. Then turn that up. So this is what it looks like basically. This is the shake. This is definitely overkill, but you can see how it's giving it this jittery kind of vibe. So when you're doing this, point zero, one, point zero, one. This right here, this is a static shot. You can see that it shakes. And I'm actually gonna put that on a loop. And you can see it gives it a jitter. Now, this is a little too much of a jitter. I would say put this at 0 0.006, put this at 0 0.009, and let's see how that looks. And that's looking pretty good. For the outer borders, you can keep it black, but for the cropped zoom, you don't want it to go too far out, but you also don't want it to go too far in so you see the borders. And it's a really simple Super 8 look. This isn't the most perfect one in the world, I'm not gonna say that. But for free, this is pretty good. So now that you know how to get the Super 8 look, I suggest getting the cinematic look with this teal and orange video here.